we'll call this Committee of the Whole meeting uh, for August 1st, 2022 to order um, in compliance with Open Meeting Act, the Open Meetings Act. A current copy of the Act is available at this meeting. Madam Clerk, could you t please take roll? Augustine Schulte? Here. Barr? Here. Hemer? Here. Jablonski? Here. Creeshaw? Here. Lohr? Here. Roth? Here. Schilling? You. Council President Augustine Schulte, the roll has been called. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, our first item on the agenda is for the fiscal year 2022-2023, and we're discussing the 1% restricted funds authority increase. So, Ms. Vasicek, would you like to? Good evening. I'll be speaking to all these items unless you guys have specific questions that we want department heads to speak to. Our finance director is out watching her youngest at state baseball. So hopefully I can answer all of your questions. If not, of course, I'll follow up with any answers um, that we can't get tonight. Um, item 2A is the 1% restricted funds authority increase. Um, I know this is confusing for some. The mayor and I got a question about it specifically from a constituent. But there are a lot of rules and regulations about how cities have to budget that come down from the state. And one of those rules is that you can increase your restricted funds authority by two and a half percent by right each year or by three and a half percent if the council a super majority of the council approves that extra one percent it's for an emergency in case you need it down the road so that's what this is every year the council has approved this since i've been here and well before i've been here um, it amounts to, you can see in your memo, it amounts to about $119,000, that extra 1%. So it's not a huge amount, but again, um, it is provides a little bit of a safety net if needed. Do we have an example of it ever being used? It was used a couple years before I got here, and it was just, um, I don't know exactly what, if it was tied to a specific thing, but we looked back to see if it had ever been used, and it was a number of years ago. Any other questions? We, we didn't use it uh, during COVID? Nope. No. Okay. Uh, our year. COVID years budget-wise were actually better than planned for because of all the federal funds that we got. Like, we oh. got uh, federal funding that covered a majority of the operation of our emergency response departments, so fire and police. I think about 70% of our wages got covered from wow. various, and that is if you you know look at the budget, that is a huge amount of money. Um, and then other CARES Act funds and those sort of things that we put in our expenses related to COVID, and we got a lot of reimbursement. So we did just fine with that. Every year this item comes up whenever we have budgets and every year we have the discussion because it's just a hard one to understand and wrap your head around and, and feel comfortable with I know every year we have this everybody asks just what is it why is it have we used it and I know we've always taken the position that even if we haven't used it what we do by authorizing it it gives us the authority to have it if just the need would come mm -hmm. And when that need would come, there'd be discussions with what you're using it for anyway. So, I mean, it's, it's basically looked at as, uh, I guess, an insurance policy that there are some funds available if the need would be there. Questions on that? So, in, in, when we d decide to use the 1%, it has to come back to the, to the council to approve it again, or is it a... No, uh, it's it's authorized for authorizing to administration to go ahead and yes. make that call without us after we vote on it. Correct. Thank you. And if you use it, you next year, what's the deal if you don't, if you do use it or if you don't use it, does it affect something the following year? No. It's always the same. It's based on a percentage of your budget authority. Okay. Yeah, okay. but if you don't. Authorize give it, it authorize it then do we lose it then so it's annual it's yeah. each fiscal year so yes if you don't use it you lose it well if we authorize it we don't have to use it we have the ability right. to, and i think what councilman mm -hmm. Schilling said is if we don't authorize it we can't go get it later no that's right. correct it has to be approved it has now to be approved now to be available sorry right. yes yep mm -hmm. yep 
Well, Madam Council President, I would recommend that the restricted funds authority be increased by an additional 1% for fiscal year 2022-2023. You're recommending or you're moving? Yes. All right, we have a motion and a second. And all in favor? Did you get a second? Yeah, I think someone over here. Second. Second. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Thanks. Go ahead and vote, please, gentlemen. Okay, and the motion passes. And we'll go to 2B, which is our fee schedule. On the fee schedule, the first changes are on in the audits division. You all remember extensive discussion that was had about aquatics rates back in June. So these rates are reflecting that discussion that was had and those recommendations that were made at that time. I do have a couple questions on this really quick. Sure. When I was reading through this, and maybe it was, maybe I was missing it, it, it appeared that the aquatic center for infant three and under, do they not get in for free? They do get in for free, or are they paying a $5 individual? $5 individual fee. Okay, because when I was looking through some of the other ones, I guess the way I was reading it was in the other places, then they are getting in free. What about we? And I guess I'm just wondering what, why they get in free free everywhere else, but like not the in the daily admission. Mm -hmm. but sorry, like at the plunge, it's oh, still listed yeah. as free. It's said in there for uh, three and under on that, if you got a membership, then you, three and under was free, and that was wrong. It's for three and under has to pay everything in the aquatic center. Even if you buy a fountain, and we had it in there wrong. Infant three and then, I see, so, okay. I think what Beth was saying though, Doug, in if you go to page, for the Pawnee Plunge Water Park, there's a daily admissions and it says infant three and under is free. Yeah, and we're recommending, well, for now that's the way it is, but next year's budget for oh. this year. So you're only, you're just changing the aquatic center so that daily admission to the plunge is free for this year for infants three and under, but next year we're, we're talking about next year across the board, 2023. Right. So, Doug, do you want them to be f not free at both places next year? So this needs to be edited. I just did the aquatic okay. center. I, so we I need to change the plunge. Okay, I see. So it's free. not free. Is they're paying? Okay. And then I guess the other question was, um, <coughs> yes, five dollars for an individual for an infant compared to a 12-year-old. I mean, that still doesn't seem comparable, I guess, because I mean, when I've taken an infant grandchild and all we do is sit on the side and cry or change diapers or spend 10 <laughs> minutes in the water and they get mad. So I'm thinking, am I, is it really a just fee to pay $5 for an infant compared to a $5 for a 10 year old who'll be there all afternoon? I mean, and I guess I'm just wondering why the reasoning where they're going to be paying, an infant would pay the same amount as Talking, I mean, we still have to, even if it's an infant, uh, we still have to lifeguard them and do all of the different things, even though, yeah, they're standing and not doing that much. And we're looking at ways to increase revenue. And so that's why we just put that in. You walk in the door, you pay $5. Okay. And even if you crawl in the door, you pay $5. Okay. <laughs> but uh, if they get the pass, <laughs> then, it, or the punch card. All right. Yeah, and I, I mean, and that's subject if you think that that's not right, but that's kind of what the staff was going through. Okay, other ways to increase our revenues. And well, and I think I think the point. Well, what you said about they still need a lifeguard, they still need someone supervising. So that justifies that for me, I guess. So, okay. Do you okay. envision a pushback? Yeah, we'll have a little bit of pushback. Got any idea how much money we're talking about? How many infants do we admit? Uh, I'd have to do some research into that. I don't, I, I'll get that number to you. I don't, right now, I don't know that. You don't know? No. Oh. Yeah, well, I was there a couple of weeks ago, and um, there were a lot of them. So, yeah. So, yeah, I will, we'll go through our last couple of years, and we'll figure out. I mean, we figured it out when we were doing it, but I, off the top of my head, I don't have it. Thanks. 
I guess what's the, the bottom line? Yeah. What's what's it going to be then for next year? The recommendation from staff is that we eliminate the free entry for three and under and charge everyone get $5. No. No. Oh, they they'll eliminate the free is what they At both places. Whether it's annual membership or anything else. I'm not right. And it. an annual membership just means that if we have a membership of six and you have a three-year-old, you have to list them as one of the six. You don't get six in addition to the infant. And if the council feels that an infant or three and under is viable for free, you have the ability to make that adjustment now. That's what the discussion is for. Do you know what the other water parks do? It depends. Some are two and under or free. Some are three and under or free. We're the first one that's crossing. We're the first one that's crossing that bridge, huh? Can, can we, instead of three of it, I mean, can we change it to at least two and under free? Or three and under, I mean. Do whatever you can. I mean, I guess I, I, I'm kind of going back and Walker. forth here. I, I guess I can see the value with the lifeguard, but once again, I just question paying $5 for a, for just the use of the facility and compared to a 12 year old, I guess, um, or a 10 year old or even a four year old or five year old. Oh, that's, I mean, if I you mean, want to make that recommendation that two and under, we think that's, I don't know. I guess I'd like to hear some input from some other council members on their thoughts. I like the two and under. Two and under. I guess the other point is, is if it's a group pass, there's not many families with more than six children in that group pass. Not but they don't it. do it but by families. But a group family. It can oh, just be right. six people. There's six that, people. That can be put on. Six neighbors or whatever the case may be. You, you don't are, think There that are more lifeguards in the infant area than there are in, you know, per square footage of the, of the plunge, let's say. There's more lifeguards in that area yeah. per square foot than there are in other areas because it does take more effort. My 15-year-old's a lifeguard this year, and I've heard multiple stories about infants being unsupervised, so it does take a lot of effort. Yeah, I can see that too, mm -hmm. yeah. I, you, you don't think that three and under, letting them in free is grooming future paying members? I don't know. I mean, I it wouldn't deter me, I don't think, but if Doug, it's really Doug's recommendation. If he, I see a lot of infants there too when I take my kids. Um, and maybe, yeah, it's a different discussion. By our rules, if anybody's under five, they're supposed to have an adult with them at all times. Now, anybody who goes out there knows that doesn't happen. We try our best to make sure it does happen. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, uh, I think they ought to pay something. I think the difference between free and $8 at the plunge is a, a pretty wide margin. And I'd suggest something in the order of three bucks for infants under three. I, I think they ought to, there ought to be a charge. I'm not sure that the charge for an individual at the plunge of eight bucks is reasonable for an infant. And I think, what is it, it's five bucks at the aquatic, uh, center. At the aquatic center. I'd suggest something like two bucks at the aquatic center, three bucks at the plunge. But I'm pretty open. I'm very open. <laughs> I think one of the other things that we struggle with with that is when we open the plunge and things get really hectic. We used to have like five different, you know, there were seniors and, and we, we simplify it so we can get th people through quicker. And, you know, everybody, okay, if their kid is five and if they can get it cheaper, all of a sudden their kid turns three. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're trying to get through all that and figure out. And so we That's try to point. simplify things by making fees as similar as possible. So it's easy. Well, I mean, I, a fee like that probably isn't a major issue. I would say this. We are the elected officials to make these really serious financial decisions. <laughs> <laughs> and quite honestly, there are some major ones moving forward. And I think if we spend all our time. time on this one, I, 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 think we sh I think it's a great conversation, but I think we just need to come up with an answer. And I think most of us feel there needs to be something and move it forward. So, well, I, we could always change next year. If we right. try it this year yes. and right. it doesn't work out, we can always yeah. Right, and I guess I just want to be able to, if a constituent calls me and says, I want to be able to have a, something to justify it with, and so the, the comment just, 
about the, the amount of lifeguards and the lack of parental supervision sometimes it just that's what it requires of us so I can I'm good with that explanation so I'm good with leaving it at five or with what you proposed so unless there's somebody really dying to change it well I'm not dying to change it but I I think we need to charge something for infants I think the individual prices that are established are too high and we can change it next year if we need to. Very good. Doug, the mom that brings the child in and she's not swimming, does she pay? She pays, all right? Now, everybody that comes to you. have a child under five, you should have a swimming suit on and be swimming. That's right. It's just yeah. my motherly advice, I guess. I mean, you have a grandma that comes in and is just there to watch the kids swim, they pay. It's not that way at the aquatic center. Okay. Well, unless somebody wants to make a motion to change it or a comment, I'm good with it the way it is. Okay. Uh, I, when, when we talk about the aquatic center, the issue is most of the people that come in, they come in for swimming lessons or something like that, so they're watching their kids in swimming lessons. We do the same with the plunge. When we have swimming lessons in the morning, mom and dad can come in and, and watch, and they don't have to. Okay. Play. I've got a question. And that's what it's been for me when I go out there. Okay. <clears throat> I have a question on the uh, aquatic therapy. $75 for 15 minutes? I can't get much therapy in 15 minutes. The billable rate that I contacted two physical therapists in town that would potentially use that, and they said it's $150 per 15 minutes. They charge in 15 minute sessions, and that's what they bill for aquatic therapy. So oh, okay. uh, half, of, half of what they bill their customer, I think, is fair since we're providing the facility in order to bill that. Mm -hmm. that I just, 15 right. minutes seemed, didn't seem like it was. It seems I thought it was <laughs> a lot too, <laughs> but. Get in the water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're working a knee. 15 minutes is a lot after a while. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so we'll jump down then to the next um, area is the. Um, fees for meals at the community center. The board made these recommendations to increase fees. It's been a number of years since fees were increased at the senior center. Any comments there? If not, community development building permit fees. So there's our new online um, permitting software charges us every time each permit or application or whatever go goes through that systems we have system we have a two dollar fee <clears throat> just to manage that software so that's um, that addition there and then we had a, a change in our title so that's just a cleanup item there on page mm -hmm. nine and then the building moving permit a slight increase there it does require quite quite a bit of staff time to deal with those sorts of things. If you're good with those. Then next is the very end of community development, and that is code enforcement and the nuisances. Um, they'd just like to add that they can also include postage and legal fees that may apply in those circumstances where they're abating nuisances or removing snow and ice. Now, is that postage, is this certified mail or just it regular is. mail? Okay. It's certified. That's why it, it sometimes can get, well, if you do Very three cool. for yeah. one, mm -hmm. expensive. Okay, no questions there. The next is engineering. They just added, a, we use Quest CDN, so there's a fee for entities that want to get on and download documents off Quest CDN, and then also the CDN mailing charged increase uh, to $20. $5 just does not cover that kind of material and use. Next is general administration. So the code book increased to $100, code book updates annually, $35. Entertainment districts this last um, year, over the course of the last year, we added the entertainment district. So this would be if a private entity wants to create a new entertainment district, the fee that we would charge as like an administrative fee to get them through all the ordinance requirements and get them to the council for consideration. 
This is um, the average of what we looked at in other communities that do entertainment districts. Next um, is library. So they added here just some clarification, really, on their fees. materials that people used, you know, that are consumable materials that are just charge as they post. So as prices come in, obviously things change very, uh, the market, especially lately, has probably been quite volatile. So if they're just able to adjust prices for patrons based on what they're paying, that's going to be the best case scenario for the city. Parks and Rec. Um, statement that just that all fees are non-refundable ballpark reservation to $35 from 31 baseball for the high school from 67 to 70 for trash then go Legion from 57 to 60 <clears throat> minor increases in the commercial rental charges, concessions, and then disc golf tournaments and league. Horseshoe, again, some minor adjustments. Softball, stadium reservations. Any comments on any of those? Marching band at the stadium, some tennis adjustments. All pretty minor here. And finally, eliminating the YMCA, because they don't use those facilities anymore. Adding a $10 per day for the fitness boot camp, and then rather than the whole set of classes, and adult softball league edition, and then extra programs fees as those are established gives staff a little bit more leniency to add programs throughout the year without having to come and adjust the fee schedule. If there's no questions in Park and Rec, we'll move to PD. Just some minor changes here. Admin fee from $20 to $30. Uh, audio video reproduction from 10 to 20. ATV UTV permit from 10 to 20 annually. Public Works, we updated our labor charge, so that's city staff time. It's been a number of years since we've updated this number, so we take our total costs of staff and average in, in this division in particular, so that's benefits and base pay and all that stuff, and we average out what it costs the city to have an employee per hour. So we're going from 35 to 55 at regular, and then uh, eight or from 50 to 50 to 80 for those over eight hours. Down um, next, actually, oh yeah, there is one more. Yeah. Another repeat of the labor charge on page 47. Just replicated those same those same figures are replicated, and then that is it for the fee schedule updates. Any other comments or questions before we yeah, leave? A couple of questions. Yes, Brent. Um, on golfing, some of the rates appear to have tax included. Other rates don't have tax included. And I'm, I'm thinking specifically about foot golf or the, the foot golf seems to have tax included. And my question is, is why is that? So you're not talking about the golf course. You're talking about the parks, but it's the... I'm talking about Vanberg foot okay. golf. That's under golf. Okay, gotcha. All right. And I'm on page 27. And it appears as though the, all the other golf stuff does not have, they're really odd figures. I think it's because when you add tax, it takes it to a round number. 
it, when you're at the course and the pro establishes the golf rates and we establish the foot golf rates. Yeah. Right, Doug? <laughs> yeah, uh, so. then, then why are we doing this here? I guess we're just approving it. Right, we have to approve the rates C sets because it's still they're still our facilities. So when you add tax to those odd numbers, then it becomes a round number. It That's how Doug Dunbar uh, requested it, it to be done. It seems a little. Well, I, I think if, if I mean, as far as the golf course fees, that was a request made that the council approved last year for to allow the golf pro the ability to set his fees and, and fine I, I but, don't but you're asking the difference between why why tax and why one are we, and why, why I, are I we showing that. fees with tax in yeah. one case and fees without tax in another case let's make things consistent I, I is what the, I'm trying to say I think the tax or the fees are included or the taxes included in the fees we pay at the golf course Right, but is that exactly the same fee? If you're going to Quill Run, is it 1776 around or is it 1850? 1850. Or, right. So that's the that's what we're saying is Doug Dunbar put these rates and we can oh, have him adjust it. I follow you. I you get follow. what I so when you go there it's a little bit more than what's listed here. Yeah. yeah. But we can update it. It's uh, I, okay, from, neither from my perspective there. I'd I'd like to see the it consistent consistency is what I'd like to see. But Doug, if they go play foot golf, is it that is it what's in here plus tax? No, that's okay. That's, that's the total. Rate. It's a flat rate, no tax included. That's okay. more because it's a park type of. Event. It's a program. Yep. Okay. And, and we set that rate. Doug doesn't set that rate. And then I had another question, if I can leave that for a second. Go back to page 18, I think. Fire, fire. Is that what and we're talking about uh, see if I can get the right spot. Now it's not page 18, it's page 15 on community development code enforcement. And we're talking about $100 an hour, including postage and legal fees that may apply. Does that mean we're adding postage and legal fees, or are they included in the $100? It means we're adding those actual fees to the $100. We put the word add plus in there someplace to make it more clear, in my mind, $100 plus. What, what we're doing. Sure. Make that note to the $100 plus possible any additional postage, or yeah, just yeah. Uh, clarify it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> it does say included yeah. postage including. and legal mm -hmm. fees. It says including, it's supposed to. She Inc says it's, it's in, in there, including a hundred dollars per hour, including postage <clears throat> and legal <clears throat> fees that may apply. You can see it. Just clear. Yeah. Just it's, it's worth clarifying. Just a different word. Yeah. yeah. Just, just a, a word. Yeah. Plus, plus postage. Oh, yeah. It is. You're right. Okay. We'll make that change. Anything else? I've got a question on page 38. I've got a tree that's half dead in my front yard, and they're going to come out and cut it down for $15. <laughs> 38. Let me get there. Tree service, $15 annually. And tree, yeah. So this is if you're a tree, if you're a licensed tree surgeon, you have to pay $15 to be a, on our registered list, uh -huh. and you have to okay. carry that much insurance. Okay. So that way when he cuts it down and it falls on your house, he's insured. Yeah. yeah. See, that way. Exactly. I was going to so say, I'm, I've When got they a tree. call yeah, us I'm and ready. say, this guy <laughs> just, yeah, dropped a tree on my Good garage. Question. Have, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, then we will <laughs> um, leave the fee schedule if there's nothing else and make that change and then move on to 2C, which is a pay plan ordinance. As we previously discussed in budget meetings, we have included this pay ordinance with an 8% cost of living adjustment. The 
Um, city has always used the same formula to calculate cost of living adjustments and when we do that it comes a little higher than eight um, percent the last 12 months according to CIP is around nine percent so we feel like an eight percent adjustment is um, appropriate we'll have a little bit more discussion about this later on in our meeting but this is what is included in this pay ordinance is an 8% adjustment across the board. That's a pay plant ordinance, right? <clears throat> yes. Any questions on that? Did we need to approve the fee schedule before we moved on? Well, I have there's gonna be- motions in there, but I just did, went off of last year. So that's up to you if you, or if you just want concurrence to go on, move forward. Um, you guys can make a, a a recommendation but the it's not as presented so um, right see. As, okay as amended i and i can as amended. that word okay yep you can go so ahead we can recommend approval uh for the fees as amended, amended. is that how we would want to make the yes yeah. all right so we'll need a motion or a motion for that please so moved thank you we have a motion and a second for approval of the schedule of fees for the fiscal year 2022-2023 as amended. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a motion and a second, so we can go ahead and vote on that. motion passes and then we'll need a motion for as far as the uh, oh do we have something else on that schedule of fees nope you did no, on the you just, did just did it all right pay plan then we need a motion I would ask that we <clears throat> hold off on a motion for this because we need to have a little bit more discussion about the total budget okay. before we officially approve okay. uh, the cost of living adjustment sure then we'll move on to, unless anyone else has any questions, we'll move on to 2D, uh, capital improvement plan. Yes, so I gave you all a new printed big old spreadsheet, we'll call it, and there's some extra on the back table for anybody who wants one. Um, this does have some updates over, um, compared to the last version that you got. So in your Spark, documents that says CIP worksheets. If you open that, it will give you much uh, more detail, another level of detail for each one of these. Okay. So if you want to go look through those, you can, but for the purposes of getting through a lot of material at this meeting, I will go through this more bulleted, abbreviated list. Um, you have your um, spreadsheet here on the far left side outside of the bold box outside of the worksheet box are numbers I'll refer to those numbers as we go through this so items 1 through 8 are general administration the numbers under the notes column those are the priority order for within these divisions the priority order for each CIP item as determined by department heads or the leader of the of that division. So the first is the FEMA hazardous mitigation brick grant. Um, we got that grant, so it'll be a do hazard doing hazardous mitigation planning. It was really born out of the 2019 flood when that happened. FEMA set aside so much money to do planning to mitigate future hazards. Um, so in that plan, we'll talk about really high level stuff. We'll talk about you know, ways to get rid of ice off the loop, how maybe extending the levee, doing things you know, um, down in Pawnee Park to pump water back over because if you remember in 2019 we were pumping water over the levee so easier ways to do that things like that all sorts of projects bred out of this planning effort and we have to have that to get federal funding i know a lot of people poo poo studies and plans in columbus but a lot of the time anytime we're doing a study or plan it's because we have to have them to get free money or mm -hmm. federal money um, in order to do projects. I know it's not free, but 
if we had to fund all those projects on our own because we didn't do a plan, it would be much more expensive to the taxpayers of Columbus than going through with the plan and getting 75, 90% funding on projects that we need to keep our community safe. So next item is Wi-Fi and public spaces. This is a $200,000 we've included here and it would provide public Wi-Fi, free access in Frankfurt Square, Pawnee Park, baseball stadium um, and football stadium, the Plunge, Girard Park. So lots of places that get lots of public use. People um, in the community are really excited about this. So it would be a great addition to a lot of spaces. It would also give the city an opportunity to get more city information out to people, paper, patrons that are using that Wi-Fi in those spaces. The next item three is miscellaneous oh. IT expenses. Yes, Dennis. I have Dennis. a question on this Wi-Fi. Sure. I don't, I don't really have a problem with the ballparks and the, et cetera, the rest of them, but I have a problem with Frankfurt Square. <clears throat> Aren't we going to have Wi-Fi in the community building? So, I mean, it seems to me if they need Wi-Fi that bad at Frankfurt, they could walk over the community building. We will have Wi-Fi in the new community building, but um, Wi-Fi in the square, we're, right now we're doing a downtown revitalization plan, again, to get more uh, funding for projects downtown. And there has been a lot of discussion about Frankfurt Square and it, improvements that the public believes are necessary at yes, Frankfurt sir. Square for it really to be used. Um, comments right now like Frankfurt Square is designed as a solitary space. It's not designed for people to, let's say, go meet for lunch. You can't even, there's nowhere to sit and eat lunch. There's nowhere, if I wanted to take my laptop and go outside on a beautiful day and work, there's nowhere really for me to sit in Frankfurt Square. There's, that's true now. you know, so that's, I think Wi-Fi will provide opportunities for more social um, activity in Frankfurt Square. Yeah. I know it will probably bring more young people down. If they're looking for a space to mm -hmm. hang out, it will be a safe environment. And whether you're reading on your iPad or Kindle or you're working or you're meeting somebody for lunch and you want to stream music or, I mean, there's lots of <clears throat> things that Wi-Fi in a public well, space can provide. I could see if provide. you have picnic tables for yeah. Wi-Fi would come in handy <laughs> yeah, I think while you're eating or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, all right. Lots of uses for it. Thank you for the question. The next is item four, just the Eagle View pictometry. That's an annual um, investment we're making. Item five is the new project, City Hall's portion of the uh, community building project. Item six is downtown improvements. This goes along with that downtown revitalization plan I just mentioned a little bit ago and also um, changes to hopefully create a downtown business improvement district in the coming year. Um, item seven is a FEMA buyout program. Again, since the 2019 flood, we have been working in coordination with Platte County and the Lower Loop NRD to um, acquire and clean up a number of properties that were really severely impacted by the flood. And the three that we are leading the effort on are the ones right on Highway 30 before you meet the 81 junction. So um, if you were to drive down there, it would be Matolka, the Aaron Ross property, and the Weber property. They're all in very they all need to be cleaned up and it will go back to its natural state. So it will definitely improve the look entering into our community and um, provide some incentive for those property and business owners to relocate their operations somewhere else. And so they won't be impacted by future floods. In your, uh, you have 165 listed on the left and in the center you have 210. Yes, days. that's because uh, today I updated it to 210 because I just got the assessments and I need to update it on. The original when I created the budget was 165, that's what it is this year. <laughs> but we just got appraisals on the properties and the our percentage has gone up to 210 based on those appraisals. That's why it's different. The final is the GPS base station on the community building. That's an engineering tech 
thing that we're requesting. Nothing for Columbus Area Transit this next fiscal year. Item nine is the entryway renovation at the Senior Center, and we did receive a $35,000 grant to assist with that work. Items 10 through 19 are the police station requests, so radio improvements, four vehicles, three fleet and one admin. Item 15 is body worn and in-car cameras and a server for the same. 16 is total station, 17 crime scene and evidence barcoding tools, 18 pepper ball munitions, 19 phone and computer forensic software. Items 20 through 28 are the fire department's requests. 20 is Charlie Lewis. As you all know, we have started that addition and renovation project and that is funded by the half cent sales tax. 21, radio communications. 22, a command vehicle. 23 is pushed out to a future year for burn room repairs. 24, Charlie Lewis as we're renovating, um, renovating the floor. So that will be coming out of half cent sales tax if it's included. Item 25, thermal imaging cameras, rescue 42 lift and stabilization struts. Item 27, rescue equipment, lifting airbags. Item 28, equipment for the two new engines. One being the one we just approved the purchase on and the other being purchased by the rural Columbus Rural Fire Protection District. Quick question. It just came to mind now. I was looking at this. So the numbers uh, that you have here are the order of priorities under notes, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, so what would, if, if we would need to come, if something needs to be cut out of a department's budget, then would you go by what these numbers are or would you, you would just look and say number six, that's out. That's but why I asked the department heads to prioritize them because um, actually just in the past week or so, I asked them to prioritize them because when we get to the end of this general fund section, you'll see that we're over the target I'd like to hit. Um, so I went in and said, I started and then I, you know, think department heads need to have more of a say in this because, um, but as you'll see, Usually the lowest priorities are the least expensive items. <laughs> um, so it works out that way. And then I have to weigh, you know, between departments or you all have to weigh between sure. departments. Because yeah. we don't prioritize when that, overall. When that does happen, I'm presuming then there's a discussion with department heads. Yep. It, yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, I have a question for the fire chief. Uh, burn room repair is 100000 What is... A burn room. A burn room. <laughs> the, w at the training center, we have a room that's on the training building that is the only room in that building where we can perform live fire evolutions. Um, I don't exactly know when that was damaged to the point of not being used, um, but it is. Right now, we do have a uh, liquid propane gas trailer out there that we can use in the meantime, but without having that live burn room for that building I mean we can still use the building but nothing beats getting some wood and, and straw on fire and feeling that heat to be able to use for training so okay thank you for explaining that yes we can flip to page two if there's no other questions on the first page item 29 is the new library the portion of the new building that's library um, Item 30 is addition to the current maintenance shop for the cemetery. Items 31 through. I have I have Go got, ahead. got a question. In, in a, <coughs> what what is our status with the old loop building? What is our we don't have a status. I with know, the but old. what is the I mean? Or what is the status? Okay, can, like can we? Is it it's still for sale? Mm -hmm. um, yep. What's our possibility of buying? Okay. Uh, no. Voucher. So I can address it. Okay. So the many, many years ago when the city established the scope of work for the 12th Avenue viaduct, Loop came forward and we have documentation of this. Loop came forward and said, we want to stay here. We're going to stay here. 
So FEMA and the state and the city designed a viaduct to go over the service center and maintain it there and not buy it out, not demo it. So it has to, so it's staying there. And if the city acquires it or Loop demos it or something happens that um, could have changed the scope of that work, FEMA will come to Columbus and reassess the whole project and take their funding back. We have been told that in very clear terms. And that we, the project was funded with this scope for this reason. Wow. If something changes that, then why did we participate in that project? And is there a time frame that within there, like like for 50 years? Well, I, in my time here, I will not recommend that you revisit that. Well, what did the viaduct cost? And that's the and Mil we had, and, millions and, of dollars. And we have I have asked staff multiple times over the last couple of years the same question because obviously it hasn't sold and still there to just to try to get any comfort level we could maybe have on that possibility it certainly does not appear there's a comfort level uh, unless you want to gamble and see what FEMA wants to do and as the city mm -hmm. administrator said that would not be a recommendation she would make so basically we just have to let that building sit there empty well Luke well, can, the, se Luke the can the sell commercial, it to, to oh, Luke the commercial can sell it to, okay we, we just, just can't, can't buy it because we, we buy it. are part of the scope Got that it. did what it did make, that makes sense we're a part okay. of the viaduct situation can, and then can a private entity then and then rent it back to the city if we needed it for that use we probably could I'd don't know why you would ask that question but I don't see why not because it's still being used I but asked the I if did, you purchase it, then it changes for FEMA. The, if the so, city does. Yes. And I did ask. If he rents it, it's a different story. Well, I did ask the question about like a lease, like you're getting at. If, if, if Rich bought it and leased it to the city, you've got the un, you know, the cloudy situation of, you know, are they going to think that was a, a fixed deal that they went into? Mm -hmm. uh, it's I mean, it, it, unfortunate, it, it's a nice facility that could fit some mm -hmm. purposes. I mean, that's a sad situation that, you know, we're not able to take advantage of, or it appears we're not able to take yeah. advantage of. Okay. Question on cemetery. Sure. That's $400,000 to fix the old Burlington Depot. An addition. Or having a study done to, uh, to see if that's an option or So do we want to leave that in the budget for 2023? It'll happen by then? Yes, we're hoping. Okay. Items 31 through 47 are the parks capital requests. 31 is the carryover of the Pawnee Park baseball field lights. The remainder of that, almost 500,000 will be spent this year, and this will be uh, 60000 spent next fiscal year. Item 32, Gerard Park concrete repairs around concessions. 33, a splash pad at Centennial Park. We're planning to apply for the Land and Water Conservation Fund grant for $250,000 or $280,000 of that project. Item 34 is armor coating some park parking lots. 35, bleacher shade covers at Centennial. 36, um, sports director software, 37, 38, and 39 are pushed out to a future year. Item 40, bleacher sh shade covers at Gerard. 41 is a Memorial Stadium study. 42 is Gerard, Gerard Park court renovations. That was previously all court. Renovations at $1.5 million. We reduced it um, and are, we'll start at Gerard. Doug feels like that is the priority park. Um, but we're, Doug's trying to get a number from the post tension group that did Pawnee to see what kind of a number we'd really need. So this is a placeholder at this time. I, I, get, a, I get a question too. I've got a comment about we have uh, we have a problem with the uh, uh, activity in the uh, 
parking lots. Like at the, uh, at the plunge and at the football field. If we would set up a pool with, a, with an LED light, these people don't like lights. Mm -hmm. But if we would light that parking lot fairly well, mm -hmm. it would eliminate, I think, a lot of those people. They would go find some other location. Fully agree with you. We're working on, in this fiscal year's budget, we have money to one project to extend fiber, which is almost done, and the second project to add cameras. In so, yeah, all of these things build off each other. You can't do Wi-Fi until you've got fiber. You can't do cameras until you've got fiber. So we're slowly getting there, but we're going to be at a point, hopefully in the next couple few months, where we'll be able to identify those things Good. exactly and deter activity. Okay. My question is, why do we need a Memorial Stadium study for 125000 Doug or Rick, do you guys want to address it or you want me to? Uh, stadium is a major disrepair, the restrooms, the locker rooms, a lot of the electrical systems, uh, the press box and everything are in major uh, press box and other things that a study could do to figure out what we do need to do to make it the last renovation we did was roughly about uh, 20 years ago the problem we're having right now is between the no new stadium and the old stadium that we added during the course of time they keep coming apart coming together coming apart and we're to the point now that we can't get it so when it rains all the water just runs down into the stadium, into the bathroom, into the concession stands. Uh, last year, uh, we blew up a couple of electrical things because the water got into the electrical room. So uh, we need somebody to tell us what we all have. Okay. Stadium up to speed. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Next item, 40, 43 is the Frankford Square sound system. 44, Frankford Square picnic tables. 45, we pushed out to a future year uh, playground at Wilderness. There was an addition of a six foot zero turn mower since the last time we met. That's why it has no number on the left side. I would like to move that up higher in priority. Doug put it as a number 10, so I'm sure it will remain in the budget because there's several under that. Because there's, I, I went down and looked at their equipment and uh, the last time one was bought was five years ago and that one's got 17,000 hours on it. That's the newest one. Where are we at? Sorry, I got Okay. Zero turn mode. Tara, how many picnic tables does oh, $60,000 okay. buy? Gotcha thousand dollars well it's six it's 60 in the another year yeah the it should have been deleted from the other line oh, again okay. those are changes that were made that well, how much is 30 30 it when we um price them out i believe that's it's about 10 to 15 tables on two pads and they're the heavy duty you know really nice ones and we even looked at maybe putting a couple in that have like a game top, like mm. a chess top. Okay. Um, and have a, the ones we looked at that seemed like a good fit were um, like a metal table and then it has individual um, like chairs or benches with backs that, so higher, higher end than we would put in a, in a park, you know, like Pawnee Park. It's their nice, classy. Fastened to the concrete. Yeah. And they're yeah. handicapped accessible on one, yes. one end? Yes. The, okay. We would. We looked at um, putting at least one on each picnic pad would have a spot or two that you could put up a wheelchair next yeah. to it. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm sorry, and I didn't. How many did you say that we were doing? 10 to 15. Just depends how many of each style you get and mm -hmm. all of that. That went to the concrete pad. The concrete pad cost would go up in that general administration, that hundred and twenty five thousand. We'd fit it in there. Would you allow people to if they wanted to donate? Would Absolutely. you allow their logos on there? Oh. Haven't talked about it, but I don't see why not. Yeah. <laughs> that would be Well the benches are all donated. 
Yes, they are. Yeah. So that would be. Hmm. Um, you know, the only th the, the thing we'd want to do on donations is think about is there a don is the donation in you know forever? Is it for yeah. five years, ten years? Mm -hmm. You know, the life uh, of yeah. the bench, I mean, yeah, is, <laughs> or is, picnic is, table. You know, because mm -hmm. we do something today, and there may be a great reason in ten years we want to redo something, not to maybe eliminate it, but to move it or whatever. Well, is that you know possible? Yeah. I mean, when yeah, you donate, when you assign a given name or somebody's to it, you know, as a donor, mm -hmm. it takes away any any uh, flexibility you might have as you move down the road. Unless just we a, say right out of the keep gate. In mind. Yeah. Unless you said what? Unless we just say right out of the gate, this is a donation, but the city reserves the right to. Well, yeah, put that, your name. well that's what I'm getting yeah. at. I yes. think we want that kind of of, of we, we want to have that discussion. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Um, item 46 and 47, these were um, the 46's master trail extension. Envision this being an annual improvement that we made a couple months ago. The council approved the master trail plan. Trails and walking paths, biking paths was f by far the greatest um, comment we got on our park and rec survey that was done this last year. Mm -hmm. Item 47 is turf. Right now, that's half a million dollars in the budget here. So, um, any questions on parks? We just spent 500,000 plus for lights, and now we're talking about another 500,000 for turf. Yeah. Well, and the turf, the turf is identified as turf, not just a ball field it could be legion field it could be Ger a field at gerard park it could be a soccer field at wilderness park the thought was to put an item in the budget that allowed that to develop over time because it's got to come if it doesn't come you know we're going to be way behind the eight ball we are right now i, park, I park. talked to some of the people in lincoln when we played in the state tournament and I suggest, you know, they asked me what was going on with, with our field. I said, well, we're getting new lights. And I said, we're, <coughs> we're discussing turf. And they said, oh, my gosh. I said, you guys, you guys get lights and turf. He said, you guys get any tournament you want in, in Columbus. So I was kind of a. The thought, the thought was to put it in as a, as a perpetual type thing, similar to the trails. Because I'll guarantee you what you're going to have, and Councilman Schilling would agree with me, you're going to have baseball in here saying, I want this one. You're going to have soccer in here saying, I want this one. You're going to have softball in here saying, I want that one. And so what you're going to have is discussions about which ones do get done over time. And, when, you know, 500000 we don't know what the costs are exactly, you know. I mean, a baseball field might be X amount. A soccer field might be X amount. It's something to use, you know. Last time I as a, had, as a got a quote on it was 535000 for infield. I mean, I, it, the, that, that's the thought process behind it. So even if we don't use it this year, it'll carry over? If next. that's what the council wants to do, we can create kind of a sinking fund. A sinking fund. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The item 48 is a continuation or carryover of... 35? Sure. I don't know how that... That's being done this year. So oh, yeah, it is. Maybe it was just... Sweet. Well, Doug, you just you saved $85,000. $85, <laughs> 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 Let go, Doug. Find 10 more. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any more you can pull out of here? <laughs> Put that on turf, will you? <laughs> <laughs> what did Doug just do here? I'll slip it a look in his budget and see what you can find. Let's be it now. Leaks your shade cover. Okay. We're starting to work here in the next couple weeks on that. That's good. Good. That's good. Awesome. <laughs> Let's see here. 49 LED lighting of the pool deck at the Aquatic Center. 50 and 51. 50 is pro shop renovations at Vanberg, and 51 is golf carts for Vanberg. Item 52 for Quail Run is finishing the flood damage repair. Item 53. Can we go to 50? Didn't we just approve golf carts at Vanberg? Last budget? They wanted, they wanted 20 to start with. Oh, so this is in addition to what's on back order. Yeah. 
yeah, the ones that we ordered last year, last February, are supposed to get here in December. Right. Wow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If they get here at all. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Flood damage repair. So that's finishing up the 2019 flood damage repair. This will is mainly the irrigation pond clean out project. 53 it's cart pass up by the pro shop some addition of paths up there just to improve safety and yeah. and wayfinding yeah. around the shop item 54 is a well repair for the irrigation pond page three items 55 through 72 are street department <clears throat> we've got another hundred we've got a hundred fifty thousand in the budget for this year for school and pedestrian crossing improvements and we'll we'll request that each year as until those um request until those recommendations out of that plan get done 56 is our normal subdivision and miscellaneous improvements that come up throughout the year so as private development happens you all know that the city is on the hook for upsizing concrete or or water or sewer mains those or intersection costs those that's what comes out of um, this line. 57 citywide pavement rehab, $2 million in the budget for that. 58 ADA improvements, again, similar to the school and pedestrian crossing improvements. We just always keep that ADA money in there to continue to update sidewalk ramps and all of those sorts of things that you always see getting updated. 59 is the continuation or carryover of 23rd Street and 48th Avenue. Then 60 is the continuation of US Highway uh, 30, 23rd Street reconstruction. So this is the third payment we'll have made. This next fiscal year will be our third payment and then we'll have one more after that that's equal to this. And then we'll be hopefully <laughs> Um, all wrapped up with Highway 30 reconstruction costs. L line 60, or no, 61. Sorry, my eyes are getting. Yeah. 61 is the downtown grade separations. We've got that going right now. We expect Wilson to come in the next month or two to give you all an update on where we're at. And so this would be continuing that process what our next steps would be in next fiscal year. Item 62, levy piping, five-year inspection. So we just signed the contract for that last meeting or the meeting before, so it's just a carryover, a continuation to finish that up. 63, East Park improvements. We need to improve some storm sewer over there, and that's under the paving, so you have to do paving work too. 64, um, traffic control across the community. Every year it's inevitable. We have traffic lights at major intersections that we need to update controls on or add a turn signal or various different things. And then this downtown um, revitalization plan, it's talking about some traffic things. So just some placeholder money in here so we can do those studies and make those changes in a more timely fashion than having to wait you know 12 to 18 months just to start doing traffic counts or those various types of things item 65 the this is a no cost in the budget but i wanted to include them here so you know that they're coming major expenses in future fiscal years so 65 the south um, mobility study it had a number of recommendations for major improvements to intersections on 8th street so um, we have recently heard that we are going to fill that staff engineer spot in february so rick will have um, assistance so that's why we're able to do these three different major projects internally if you add those up that's six hundred and seventy thousand dollars of costs we've saved just between those three projects in engineering fees so that's why I put them in here a so you know they're coming next year for major expense and you can see the value of that investment we made a couple months ago of a staff engineer mm -hmm. Um, and then item 67 
is 48th Avenue from 23rd Street to Bradshaw Park. That will happen next fiscal year, so next construction season. 69 is a snow plow, two-way snow plow attachment for a five-yard dump truck. 70 is a three-quarter ton pickup with a plow. 71 is a street sweeper. And item 72 is a loader forks. Uh, yeah. Yes, Dennis. On uh, Bradshaw from 20, 48th Avenue to 23rd Street, us councilmen are getting a lot of calls from citizens living out there, and they don't feel it's fair for them to be assessed that much for Bradshaw Road because the railroad uses it a lot and the public uses it a lot, so yeah. it won't be settled till next year. So the... They are making noise right now because they got a letter about a week ago, um, but it's at least the second communication we've had with those property owners. And just as a reminder to you guys, we are proposing using federal funds purchase program money. So they are paying 20 cents on the dollar. So we are paying 80% of the cost and they are paying 20 percent so that and it's exactly for that reason okay. because it is more of an arterial road a lot of other people than the people that live right next to it are using it that's why the city the general taxpayers are paying 80 percent of the costs well it's good to have that information mm -hmm. that would be nice if you sent that letter out to those it's people. in the letter oh we and i asked rick today i thought you meant to property owners so that was in the faqs that the property owners got but also we talked to, Rick and I talked today and he just, today's been yeah. busy, busy. <laughs> um, so Rick's gonna send out that letter that he sent on the 22nd of July to all of you and you'll see exactly what they see, what they got, what they saw. Um, so you can prepare yourself for the uh, hearing at set first meeting in September. Well, yeah, and the per, I think I, I received a call too and I did explain to that person who called me that, you know, 80% mm -hmm. is covered, you're mm -hmm. only doing 20%. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they still felt it was unjust um, because they didn't. Um, so, uh, yeah, but that was the same thing that came up with streets going north up by the, the middle school when we were putting that all in and mm -hmm. people had the same the same concerns and, and, uh, wanting to, and I guess the other question was, you know, the businesses that are using that road, do they, you know, why are they not paying more because they use the road more or something? So, um, technically, they're helping to pay for eighty percent of it. I mean, that's yeah. That's why we set it up that way yeah. on those roads. I, I, I explained that, but mm -hmm. I don't know if they. Okay. It's yeah. still a big cost. It's still a shock. I, of course, yeah. we're all sympathetic to that, but it's it is growing pains of we are a growing yeah. community, so these are things we have to what's, do. And yet, the, it hurts. What's the process of extending this payment out over a period of time? What's the yeah, we can. We'll address all those things, and those that information I'm sure was in the letter. So we'll send that all out, so you can read up on it and educate yourself on all of that. But they'll it, they have it, options. I know they have options. I'm just. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't sure what the options were. Yeah. So sure, yeah. we'll send all that to you. And, uh, discuss that. So are the eighty I just, I just, are the eighty percent Fed well, funds or is it city funds? Well, it's a combination of city and federal funds. So we don't get enough federal. If you look just at the that project, our federal funds in hi, our highway and federal our highway allocation and federal funds are 3.1, just our federal funds for purchase program dollars are um, about probably 70% of that. So we don't get enough. If next year we're gonna do 3 million plus another three, we've got over $6 million worth of major arterial roads that we're gonna be improving next year and we'll get federal funds that cover about a third of that. So city tax dollars cover that too, so sales tax dollars. And you can see that here in the budget even for this year, like the citywide pavement rehab, 23rd Street, Highway 30, those are all divided into different funding categories based on how much funding we get. And the mass majority of it is covered by sales tax. So 
just really quick then that 80 percent that is covered is that that's coming from our the tax dollars from the entire city yes so the entire city is helping pay for that street those that live on it mm -hmm. are paying for the 20 percent the 20 percent mm -hmm. that's make that makes sense one of the uh, one of the comments i got is that he went back but his neighbor right next to him didn't, didn't get assessed and he was wondering oh well, yeah, it's got to stop somewhere. <laughs> it can't go on forever. I just listen. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. It does stop somewhere. So I, I and am sympathetic to that. if you're on a corner lot, you really don't yeah. like it. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Where, yeah. But don't they go partway down the avenues? Yes. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And you would have had a, a similar situation about a year ago, year and a half ago, on East East 14th with, with, our, with our residents out there asking mm -hmm. many of the mm -hmm. same questions. Mm -hmm. You know, because they had the same type of road with out the curb and the gutter and when it was time to redo it got redone the same way this is happening. I was in, I was informed that we did not need curbs and gutters and I, I, it must have been the same lady talked to me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah thanks for the info Terry sure. it's nice to have more information on that sure item 70 through three through 77 are airport requests so a pickup with a snow uh, a blade on it for snow removal um, the beginning design of an eight place T hanger that's in our ALP, um, a major ALP update. It's been, I think 2012 was the last time the airport did a major plan planning, um, document, and that needs to be updated again to get that 90% federal funding on projects as we move through our planning projects. Uh, hanger improvements and then a mower out at the airport so as you can see on this line before you flip the page general fund total is about 9.9 .9 of what's included on the sales tax line we need to be under 9.8 so we took out the 85,000 so that definitely that gets us a lot closer but just um, so you know when I bring this back in final form there's going to be some more minor adjustments hopefully not to anything um, that's a high priority of course it'll be a low priority item but we will have to make a few more adjustments and inevitably somebody will come forward with some emergency thing and it's got to be number one priority it always happens or I thought this was going to get done this year but it's actually going to carry over a half a million dollars and then that throws this all out of whack so just so you know um, there will be changes before it comes in its final form, but I'll, of course, communicate that uh, with you as quickly as possible. I, the last sheet, these are our divisions or funds that are um, separate from tax funds that the city's mm -hmm. tax, supported dollar, tax dollars go to. So 78 through 81, this is Joint Communications Center. As you all know, we operate the JCC and the JCC board um, jointly establishes a budget and all of those things together. The city council and the county pass that budget. The county establishes a property tax across the whole county and pays for these expenses. So 78 tower and radio equipment. Um, it's a placeholder. Things come up throughout the year. 79 EMD software, emergency medical dispatching. That's what that stands for, correct, Rachel? Yes. yes. Um, 80 mobile radio consoles, 81 radio updates. You'll see a, a common theme, the radio updates. It was in fire, police, and JCC. Tonight on the city council agenda, there's a consulting agreement the JCC wants to initiate to have somebody come in and really help us understand what our solution, our options are for a solution to radio communication. So um, hopefully this next fiscal year we'll move forward and really uh, make a dent in solving those issues that we're having. Because obviously for our um, first responders, that is paramount that we have a good radio system for their safety. Items 82 through 91 are wastewater items. So a portion of the 23rd Street reconstruct reconstruction is sewer. 
um, redoing that. So that's that cost again, we'll have it this year and again next year, and then we'll be done with it. We've paid similarly the last two years. 83, North Sanitary Sewer Collection System. Item 84, lift station renovation. This is out by Westbrook. 85, the CIP lining, which we do every year and is a great investment for the system. 86, design of uh, 25th Street and 35th Avenue. So that was a requested 750,000, but we did design only and put it down to 75,000. There's a lot going on next fiscal year for, for sewer. Um, <clears throat> replacing a mini excavator, tilt bed trailer, upgrade lift station SCADA systems, and a sewer rate study, and uh, then the sewer main at Sunset Park got pushed out until next fiscal year. Items 92 through 95 are wastewater treatment, the spectrophotometer in the lab, $15,000, the final effluent sampler, twelve thousand. Trailer mount, bypass pump build, fifteen. UV bulbs and sleeves, twenty-five thousand. Items ninety-six through one hundred and two are for the water division. We've got the water extension, design, and construction. This is up on Lost Creek Parkway from Eighteenth Avenue over to sixty-third um, or Highway eighty-one. Excuse me. And then 97 is again that 23rd Street reconstruction, the water portion of that. And there'll be another one next year. Repainting fire hydrants, the uh, storage rehab, water system hydraulic rate study. So that'll be in conjunction with the wastewater rate study. And then... Um, it's a little bit more in depth because we're going to look at need. So we're going to look at where future wells might need to go, where all of that, where the, how the system might need to change as we continue to grow in town. Because you can't just continue to add mains and not increase your supply, right? It doesn't work that way or increase pressure with towers or whatever. It will tell us all of those things that we'll need to do as we continue to grow. Um, item 101 and 102 were pushed out to future <coughs> fiscal years. Items 103 through 105 are for the stormwater utility, our newest enterprise fund. So we've got stormwater and flood evaluation and improvements for 58,000. 104 is the East Park stormwater improvements. We discussed a little bit earlier when we were talking <coughs> in streets. 105 is trunk line storm sewer cleaning for 50,000. Last items are 106 and 107 for the transfer station. Um, replacing a JBR Packer adapter and then two trailers, replacement of two trailers that they use for hauling the refuse to the landfill. I have a question and sure. you, prob you may have already told us, but when it says other source of funding, what does what is the other? It's a variety. Okay. It would, You'd have to ask project specific okay. and I could okay. tell you um, but like for the enterprise funds it's the enterprise funds it's the revenues it's in other because those don't take tax dollars it's the wastewater revenues that yep. okay. users pay yep so that makes sense yep. if it's in another division it's a grant or um, ARPA funds is in there yep. uh, or it's it actually has its own column this year okay yep it's just, it could be a wide if we variety. put every funding source, this spreadsheet would be too, too long. Yeah. Let's see. All right, council member. Oh, go ahead. Let's see. Do we need to go through the, uh, I don't think we need a, a motion or anything on this one. No, we don't. Okay. Uh, okay. But we need to go through the capital improvement worksheets. Yeah. I do not. I do not need to go through them. We just went okay. through all of that. If you guys look through them and you have questions, it's just more detail on what I already Th this went is just through. Support it's for the this. same yep. thing. Yep. 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 So. And then the last thing on 2E before, well, not the last thing, but quick thing, the all personnel attachment. I want to go through that real quick. And I did not print it, but I printed it at your last meeting. 
if you pull that up, Janelle, the all personnel requests. Yeah. I, if you flip over here too, I can navigate it if right. you want. But in the general fund, we had previously discussed a community coordinator position. I have a question out to the Arts Council about how much they can contribute to that position. And we are still in the beginning stages of a downtown business improvement district. So that is really a placeholder. And it may be that this next fiscal year, we don't do it. We get these things in place. And then next time when we do budget a year from now, then we put it in. Um, for now, it's in there. But um, the only issue with not doing it this next fiscal year that we're working on right now is that we're going to be in this new building and just having policies and a, a one contact for if you want to use the building and all the rooms in it and we're going to have to figure that out if we don't add a person that can take on all that responsibility. So that honestly will be a bit of a challenge to do that really well with the staffing that we have right now. Um, so that's the only issue there we'll make a final recommendation once we have a little bit more discussion about budget here. The next one, uh, building maintenance. This again is for the new building. We currently have a part-time maintenance position in the library budget. <coughs> that would be, gr that would basically grow into a full-time position, but not just for library, but for the whole building, the whole new building. <coughs> Public, oops, my just shut oh where'd it go i don't know i just exited everybody out i think um, and the third position in the general is uh, under general is the public communications manager this is um one that i really think columbus and the c citizens of columbus would really benefit from because department heads staff do an excellent job of getting a lot of really great things done. We do 99% of the time, we do exactly what we're supposed to do every single day and <coughs> keep you know, vital resources running and we do exciting projects and all that, but we don't do a great job of telling the community what we're doing because we're so busy just trying to get it done. Um, so that this position would be 100% dedicated to telling the community what the city's up to, what's upcoming, what we've done, what we're spending sales tax on, what events are in Frankfurt Square this weekend, you know, all those things that just get put to the back burner so frequently. Um, parks to rec maintenance workers, as you all know, this year we started taking over really two years ago, but more this year, started taking over running activities, tournaments, and things in our parks. Gerard was big this year. Um, there'll be more coming, and we need staff in order to take care of those facilities and offer those um, things. So then six to seven part-time summer uh, park and rec people. So marking and dragging fields and go ahead back to your public communications manager sure. i think something that i hear a lot of i and i believe a lot of us do is how did this how come i didn't know about this and how come i didn't know about that why was this meeting held and i didn't know i should go to it mm -hmm. you know when, when was that decision made it's that whole communication process you know, you, you mentioned all the things that are going on that are basically the good things of what's happening in our community. But in today's society, the old fashioned way of people knowing what's going on doesn't work anymore. Not everybody gets the paper. Not everybody listens to the radio. You know, the standard ways that we used to communicate what was happening in our community it isn't working for a large portion of our population. Yeah. So and this isn't a fail safe. This oh, isn't no, going to no, eliminate no. all of that, but it's going to dedicate somebody all the time to share the story. Yeah, absolutely will be a huge improvement over what we've got going on now. Um, the last general fund division, police, they requested an officer, so that is included here. 
the part-time CST position is not included in the budget presently. Fire and Rescue did request three more fire and EMT positions, but that is not included. If a SAFER grant is awarded, then we can add those positions. SAFER grant would cover 100% of cost for all of them for up to, for three years. And we, so we, <clears throat> are we going to hire any then extra firefighters at all, even? Not if we don't get the SAFER not grant. Not if we don't get the SAFER grant, okay. The last, the bottom part of that spreadsheet is Joint Communications Center. Again, this is funded through the county's levy for this. So two communication specialists and two lead communication specialists. If there aren't any questions on those personnel requests, I gave you a spreadsheet that I want to talk a little bit as a general overview. It's titled General Fund Operation and Maintenance. It's this one. This is the, the bottom line here is what I just went through is our ideal, it's department heads, staff leadership's ideal budget. The ideal budget has these new personnel positions. My ideal budget, and I think yours, has a very competitive cost of living adjustment because we want to compensate our existing employees as best we can. Um, so we've got that 8% in there. And it also has, you know, operations and maintenance increases that are in the budget. So with that, all of those things, we have a deficit of $1.9 million. If last year, and recommending again this year, last year we applied Kino revenues to parks and recs um, operation and maintenance. So that's $715,000. We discussed in an earlier budget meeting a lodging or a hotel occupation tax. A 4% lodging or hotel occupation tax would generate about $350,000 annually. Again, I would recommend earmarking that towards, um, you know, people attraction, tourism things. So that'd be park and rec um, sorts of activities. Like we just talked about with the personnel, it takes a huge amount of effort from staff to have 400 people show up at Gerard for three days, you know, and play dozens and dozens of games. And we see that um, return in not directly from those events. We see it in sales tax. We see it in hotel rooms and those sorts of things. So presently, we do not have a lodging or hotel tax. It's um, very common in our sister cities. In fact, I did research today, and um, not one of our sister cities does not have a hotel tax, actually. We are the only um, community of our size and even smaller that does not have a hotel tax. And that's great, but I do think it's time to start having a discussion about if we're going to continue to up the caliber of what we're offering at our facilities, we have to have revenue to do it. Otherwise, this is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, um, or we don't. We just don't do those things. And I think um, the community is coming to expect that we can offer these things in the community. Sure. Obviously, it's paid by tenants, by users of hotels and lodging facilities. And you mentioned lodging facilities. Would that include Airbnb? Yep, and campgrounds. Um, all of those sorts of things. What is the it, average of the sister cities? But it's they're between two and four percent. Okay. I saw one as high as five and a half. Um, state law does limit us. We can't generate more than seven hundred thousand dollars in a fiscal year um, from one occupation tax without a vote of the people. But um, for example, in twenty ten, Norfolk passed a hotel and restaurant um, food and beverage tax. Um, I think it was 4% hotel and 2% food and beverage. And those two generated about $2 million a year. Food and beverage generates, just based on my research of, you know, Kearney, Norfolk, Fremont, um, 
all had both and food and beverage generates about three or four times more than a hotel but obviously then you're going to affect your residents whereas a hotel tax is your it's all all the visitors and quite frankly they're paying it everywhere else they're going um so that i included that here as a new revenue to put into place and then i'm we do not get property tax numbers from Platte County Assessor until August 20th. So I am including an assumption of 5% growth. Last year, I think that's conservative. I think that's minimum. Last year, it was a little over 6% um, growth. So I included 5% here. So the remaining deficit we need to have a frank conversation about is $601,000. And I put some options together just as discussion points, but obviously these are not the only options we can talk about. But A, um, I, Heather and I requested that staff leadership department heads go through their operations and maintenance budgets. And um, frequently we see incremental increases and it, you know, uh, $500, $1,000 increase in a line may seem like no big deal, but when you compound that by 50 lines that did that, then it, it becomes a little bit more of a big deal. So we have asked every department to go through their budget and really think about their needs. I don't think many um, want for much in our department. So I, we really, if we wanna add these staff and we wanna compensate our employees the best we can compensate them, we really need to look at our operations and maintenance budgets and see where we can pull back a little bit in order to do these other really good things. So that would of course be my, I would love for that to happen, but $601,000 is quite a hefty amount to cut out of O&M. This, we are not talking about capital. This is just operation and maintenance. Option B, um, the new personnel we just talked about, doesn't happen. That's $435,000. But if you remember those things we talked about, we talked about more in park and rec employees to just do what we did this year. Um, a maintenance person for the new community building, an information, a communications manager, a police officer. You know, if, if we can't cut some money out of our operating budget, then we cannot afford to add those positions. Bottom line. Option C, reduce our cost of living increase. The numbers say we should do around 8%, but if we don't make other adjustments, we cannot afford to do 8%. Option D, raise other occupation taxes or property taxes. So I need a little bit of guidance. Um, obviously there can be combinations of these, but I just wanted for discussion purposes for you all to know that the ideal budget that department heads have requested and um, we can't afford that. And I think this speaks in years past, we've, we've generally been able to do it, but we are growing so quickly, I think compared especially to our sister cities and we're, we are operating with less staff. So we have historically had less diverse revenues than our sister cities. If I, today I looked at Norfolk's budget and Fremont's budget and Kearney's budget, they have a lot more occupation taxes generating well over this deficit every year and they've had them in place for a while. So they grow, um, That's that was a big thing I noticed. Um, but even with these staff additions we've made, we're still under what our sister cities, how their levels of staffing that they're at. So I don't think that not growing in staffing um, entirely can be the answer. I don't think option B by itself is something we should just not add any new positions because we are growing and that is creating more work. And quite frankly, the, 
the staff we have are working. I do believe they're working very hard um, and doing a lot. Obviously, they're doing a lot. If we're growing and we're, we're doing good things and we have less staff than our sister cities, then they're working harder. Um, so that's, that's awesome. And we don't want to discourage that by then not giving them a good cost of living adjustment. You know, so this is a hard decision. This is why I brought this to you. Usually, um, it's, it's more of a crunch this year than it has been in previous years. And I want department heads to hear that, um, this is not a fun job <laughs> sometimes <laughs> this time of the year. So I want a little bit of feedback on what you guys think we should do to get rid of that let that red deficit line I guess one of the things is I I am completely in support of the added personnel um, I just already think we have already stretched we already have such a lean city staff and um, we are growing I I just think that the personnel that we've that's been brought up we need to keep all that that's my thought I don't know what anyone else thinks um, and I guess I also agree that the cost of living adjustment we need to pay our people a fair wage I mean that's just that's only a just thing so I don't know if it's possible between uh, option a and option D to create those to meet that so I guess Anybody else? I'd be interested to hear what other people think. What would that one percent be for a rest, restaurant tax? I would have to crunch some numbers and see because um, I can't just look at sales tax numbers because that's not an accurate representation of what food and beverage would be. Um, but I, based on just what other communities do of similar sizes and what they generate from lodging and hotel and sales, I can probably come up with an estimate. I'm conservatively, 1% could probably raise $750,000. But again, we can't generate more than 700 without a vote of the people. Um, and maybe it's, I put the lodging and hotel tax in at 4% and I know that generates, I know last year in 2021, that generated $350,000 because that is what the CVB, they, they have a 4% and it generated that much in 2021. So it's a conservative number because 2021, you were coming out of COVID and all of that. So it's probably going to be more than that. But again, conservative number. Mm -hmm. I think the thing you've got to do is also go back to department heads and make sure they hear what we're the, the discussion we're having here today about how hard it is, and I know the first thing is going to be, well, we gave you all our main <coughs> items, but let's look at them, and is there something there that can be next year's? Is there something there that you know, <coughs> doesn't have to be this year? Um, I'm just, I mean, I think we throw that at them to begin with because, as you pointed out, we want them to recognize the, the pain and agony we go through on this to try to come together with something that works for everybody. Yeah, and they should have a say. And we and want their, we, you know, we want their input and their thoughts. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying they're going to find anything, but I think we we give them the opportunity to say, all right, I, you know, this one can roll to that, and maybe there's some some of that in there. Uh, if the council feels that an occupation <coughs> tax on 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 food is something to investigate, I'd ask you to do some more homework on it. You know, um, I don't know what some more input. Is that even something? Yeah. Like I'm sorry. Could that make the ballot ballot this year? <coughs> if we took it to a vote of the people, I mean, you could do a special, or you can you can do a lower percentage, and see what it generates, and just keep it under that amount that needs voter approval. Yeah, keep it under seven hundred fifty thousand, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's seven hundred. Or seven hundred. Okay. You know, and and also the lodging and hotel, you could look at doing a little bit higher percentage there um mm -hmm. judging by like my property tax statement yeah. uh, the five percent is very conservative mm -hmm. it is conservative and yeah if if on the 20th it comes in a lot higher we will just fill that gap and 
if it's higher than that, we can talk about it lowering our property tax. <laughs> but okay. that is, it's unlikely that it's going to go up much more than that because that would mean about a 15% increase. So. I'd be in favor of looking at the hotel and lodging tax because that taxes the people that are coming to visit. Increasing it over over four percent, you're saying? Because I've already got four percent plugged in. That's already. I'd leave in it at this. four. Mm -hmm. Or do you? You said somebody was at five. There. I mean, I don't think. Yeah, there was somebody at five or five and a half, but it's specific to communities. So <clears throat> they set it based on the gener uh, revenue they need to generate. You know. So um, and maybe. You know, the silver lining is that I keep telling myself, and it's worth saying here, is that we are hopefully looking at some new revenues in the coming years with yes. the gaming and right. racino, whatever you want to call it. Um, so hopefully <coughs> in future years we can, you know, have easier discussions about this. But And with the new revenues coming from the casinos, we're also, if you do pass the occupation tax, or the lodging tax that they're having hotels and motels too. Any lodging in the city limits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got a kind of a double dip, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So Councilman Barr is asked to, or, or you know, do you want to look at 5%? I mean, right now staff just needs some direction okay. to try to have some options and, and, and to give them a point to of much, doing yeah. some homework. How much more is it going to be to have 5% compared to 4%, I guess, is what something I would like to see. Right. Um, and well, then, if you uh, look at a $100 hotel room, it's yeah. a dollar more. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And I guess I am just a little, a little leery about doing anything with property taxes myself. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we're still paying, I believe we're still paying a bond for the high school. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And I know that was a big, a big... Uh, bite for a lot of citizens um and so that's just not something i'm open to looking at i guess but that, then that's not going to go away no it's not because when this one gets paid off there'll be another one right okay. behind yep. you. um but I would, I, would, uh, I would think your your sentiment on property tax is probably straight across the board straight here. across the board there mm -hmm. you go. that all <clears throat> are of that, of that nature yeah so uh, you know i think it, on hotel Lodging 4% would be reasonable because I don't that's think that's already we, built into this, though. Yeah, because we don't want to be the highest, and I think right. that's right. very reasonable. Yeah. So, this 601, this is what you came up with these things already. Already, these right. top things are already included in that. All right, the so. remaining deficit is what we're talking about, and that's and maybe it's a combination of all these things. Maybe department heads can cut a couple hundred thousand, and maybe a couple of those personnel things don't happen this year. And maybe we do a six percent cost of living instead of eight. What are I mean, other I, occupation taxes that could be considered other than lodging and restaurants? Um, those are the big ones. Sometimes there's um, they have, there's billboard occupation taxes. There's, Carney has that. It generates actually quite a bit. Um, the Anything like there was some <coughs> refuse and garbage hauling extra occupation taxes on that. You could even do water and sewer. There's there's diff it's just ways to generate additional income. Yeah, additional revenue. And there's something to be said for um, water and sewer just because if you're if and some the only time people or communities have done it that I've heard of is because they're doing an occupation tax on water and sewer. It gets everybody, but then they earmark it for economic <coughs> development. So they're growing their base. So the idea is that we're growing our base with this money so your water and sewer rates aren't increasing as sharply right? because Makes we're sense. growing the amount of customers. So I just wanted to have, I knew you weren't going to come up with a solution for me, but I wanted you to know that there's still a fair amount of work to be done with the budget, um, and we'll present a final solution without a deficit um, one way or another, and that may mean that all, it will mean that not all those personnel 
um, positions are in. I do think of these things I've talked about, the cost of living adjustment, staying at 8% is my highest priority um, for our existing employees. I think that's very important. Um, but we'll, we'll work and see what other solutions we can come up with. That is all I have. Any other questions, gentlemen? Thank you, city staff, for all the work you have done to put this in, and whoever created this. Thank you, Tara. Yeah. This was the easiest budget thing to follow for yeah. me that I've seen, so thank you very much for doing that. Yeah. Otherwise, if there's nothing else, no other questions, then I will, the meeting is adjourned.